Glory to God. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, glory to God. I welcome you all to this evening meeting. I pray that the Lord God of heaven would reward us abundantly in the name of Jesus. Let's open our mouth. Let's begin to thank God for what he has done for us. Let's worship him and honor his name. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the omnipotent God, the mighty man in battle. Open your mouth and give him, you know, say sweet things to the Lord this evening. Give him the fruit of your lips this evening. Open your mouth and begin to worship him. The Bible says in Psalm 119, for, um, verse 45, it says, And I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precept. Thank you, because the Lord is causing us to walk at liberty. Thank you because the Lord is causing us to walk at liberty. Open your mouth and begin to say sweet things. Lord, we thank you because you are causing every one of us to walk at liberty. We thank you because, Lord, your plan and the agenda of heaven for our lives shall come to pass. We thank you, Lord, because you have called us together again to seek your face and because you will minister yourself to us all. We thank you, Lord, because of your grace that is available for us to be able to maximize the virtues, the potentials that you have deposited in our life. We thank you because today, Lord, you will teach us how to receive all that you have released to your children. Lord, we thank you because there will be restoration. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we declare this program opened in the name of the Father. In the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Even as we remain in the mood of worship, let's just give him all that he deserves. Let's worship his holy name. Jesus Christ. Father to child, spirit to spirit, lighted by your word. And with your breath of life, that's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. 
Father to child, Father to child, Spirit to spirit, lighted by your word. Oh, and reach your breath of life. That's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. I don't know the circumstances that we are in, but let's just say it. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Oh, Yahweh's your name. Always breathe, Lord. Just breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Father to child. Father to child, spirit to spirit, spirit to spirit, lighted by your work. Oh, and with your breath of life, that's how I come my life, that's how I change my world. Father to child, father to child. Spirit to spirit, spirit to spirit, lighted by your word. Oh, and with your breath of life, that's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Let's pick it, let's sing this song with affirmation. Father to child, father to child. Spirit to spirit, spirit to spirit, lighted by your word. Mm. And with your breath of life, that's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Just breathe, just breathe, just breathe, just breathe your name upon me. Breathe, Jesus, breathe your name upon me. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe, Yahweh, Yahweh's your name. Breathe, Lord, breathe, Lord. Just breathe, just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Oh, just breathe your name upon me. Breathe, your name is enough. Just breathe upon me, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Yahweh, 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 breathe, Lord. Oh, just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Father to child, Father to child, Spirit to Spirit, I am lighted by your word. Oh, and with your breath of life, that's how I come alive, that's how I change my world. Father to child, father to child. <laughs> oh, spirit to spirit, lighted by your wall. Oh, and with your breath of life, that's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Father to child, Father to child, Spirit to spirit, Spirit to spirit, I am lighted by your word. Oh, with your breath of life, that's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Just breathe your name. Just breathe, just breathe, just breathe your name upon me. Breathe, Daddy. Please breathe upon me. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Oh, 
Take it away if Yahweh's your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe, just breathe your name, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. It's a declaration, just breathe upon me, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Oh, Yahweh is Yahweh is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Jesus, breathe upon me, God. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Oh, Yahweh, Yahweh is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Say, Father to child, Father to child. Spirit to spirit, spirit to spirit. I am lighted by your word. Oh, oh, and we see your breath of life. That's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Father to doubt, Father to child. Spirit to spirit, spirit to spirit. I'm lighted by your word. Oh, oh, oh. And with your breath of life, that's how I come alive. That's how I change my world. Just breathe, just breathe, just breathe, just breathe your name upon me. Breathe, Jesus, breathe your name upon, just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Yahweh, oh Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Let's just call the circumstances, whatever it is, breathe. Oh, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Jesus, breathe upon me. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh is Yahweh is your name, breathe, Lord. Just breathe, just breathe your name upon me, breathe. So praise the Lord. That is our confession sign. Let's say in the name of Jesus. Name I walk of I walk forward with happiness in my step and joy in my heart. I walk forward with happiness in my step and joy in my heart. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am brave enough to make bold leaps forward. I am brave enough to make bold leaps forward. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I embrace biblical truth to guide my decisions. I embrace biblical truths to guide my decisions. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am I am I possess an infinite potential to succeed. I possess infinite potentials to succeed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am calm and peaceful. I am calm and peaceful. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I refuse to let anyone pull me back into a situation. I refuse. I refuse to let anyone pull me back. I refuse to let anyone pull me back into a situation I already left behind. Into situations that I have already left behind. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Christ Jesus. 
in Christ Jesus. I accomplished the goals that I set for myself. I accomplished the goals that I set for myself. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Uh, we are now in our prayer sections. Amen. Uh, I read from the book of Genesis 50, verse 25. And Joseph made the Israelites swear an oath and said, God will surely come to your head, and then you must carry my bone up from this place. Uh, we all know that account that when the his Joseph, when they were in Egypt, and be, but before Joseph died, he made the Israelites to swear an oath that because he know what he know the restoration of Israelite is what is will surely come. Is he, he, he knew that the Israelite will definitely God is going to restore to them what he had what promised them. So he made them to swear an oath that when the Lord then you must carry my book home from this place. And if we also look at Hebrew 11, 22, it says that by faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of Israel and gave instruction about his bones. You know, one thing that is connected to restoration is what is faith. Before we can be restored, we also need to, to attach our faith. So we take this first prayer point like this. Oh, oh Lord, my Father, in, in any area of my life that my faith is wavering, oh Lord, uphold my faith. A prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, in any area of my life that my faith is wavering, oh Lord, I uphold me in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, uphold me in the mighty name of Jesus. O Lord, uphold me in the mighty name of Jesus. O Lord, uphold me in the mighty name of Jesus. O Lord, uphold me in the mighty name of Jesus. O Lord, uphold me in the name of Jesus. O Lord, uphold me in the mighty name of Jesus. O Lord, uphold me in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. If we also look at that account, as at the time when Joseph was, was giving this instruction to the Israelites, it does not look like it that they will be restored. That is, <laughs> that they will surely uh, get to the promised land that the Lord has promised them. But one thing is, Joseph knew that God is going to restore them. So we take this other prayer point like this, that I receive restorations from all long due. In, you know, some situation in our life may be long due, overdue. You, you take this prayer point that is that I receive restorations in every area, even on long and overdue cases. I receive restorations in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive restorations in the name of Jesus. I receive restoration in every area in the name of Jesus. I receive restorations in the name of Jesus. I receive restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive restoration in the name of Jesus. I receive restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. In every area, in, in situation that I might have even given up on myself, I receive restorations in the name of Jesus. I receive restorations in the name of Jesus. I receive restorations in the name of Jesus. I receive restoration in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Uh, if we also look at Isaiah 43 verse 19, I read, I read from NIV. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it spring up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and stream in the what? In the waste land. That is God is making a promise that is going to what? That is a promise of restorations. Even though when it does not seem like it, that is going to come to pass. That God, but we should, we should be what? We should just hold on to God that what he promises us is going to what? Is going to, 
it's going to come to pass. You take this prayer point like this. I receive restorations. Even when I have lost hope in the mighty name of Jesus, I receive restorations. Even when I have lost hope in the name of Jesus, I receive restorations in the name of Jesus. I receive restorations in the name of Jesus. I receive restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive restorations in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive restorations in the name of Jesus. I receive restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive restoration in the 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 mighty name of Jesus. I receive restorations in the name of Jesus. I receive restorations in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive restorations in the name of Jesus. I receive restorations in the mighty name of Jesus. I receive restorations in the name of Jesus. I receive restorations in every area of my life in the name of Jesus. I receive restorations in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Uh, if we also look at Isaiah 60 verse 1, I read from here, and it says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. <laughs> That's NIV, I read from NIV. And I'm also going to read uh, another translation that's from uh, Amplify. Arise, that is from spir spiritual uh, depression to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory and brilliancy of the Lord. For your light has come and the glory and the brilliancy of the Lord has risen upon you. One thing we should know here is the Lord is telling us to what? To arise and what? And shine. That is the promise of the Lord that he's telling us to what? Arise and shine. Amen. Take the last prayer point in this section like this, that I arise and shine in every area of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I arise and shine. In the name of Jesus, I arise and shine in every area of my life. In the name of Jesus, I arise and shine. In the name of Jesus, I arise and shine. In the name of Jesus, I arise and shine. In the name of Jesus, I arise and shine. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. So we are also going to pray. The last prayer point for Nigeria, that O oh Lord arise and restore our nations back to your original design. Prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. O oh Lord arise and restore back our nations to your original design in the name of Jesus. O oh Lord arise and restore back our nations to your original design in the mighty name of Jesus. O oh Lord arise and restore back our nation to your original design, to your original plan. The plan of God for Nigeria shall not be thwarted. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. We thank God for that session. God bless you, sir. Um, we thank God for the worship session. We thank God for what he is set to do in our midst. We are still waiting for the minister. Uh, we believe that she will join us shortly. But before then, I just want you to open your mouth and begin to say sweet things unto the Lord. Glorify his name this evening. Glorify his name this evening. Glorify his name this evening. He has done wondrous things for us. And he is going to do wondrous things for us again this evening. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Lord of Lords. Thank you, Jesus. Um, before we conclude, let's look at um, Psalm 1, 32, verse 17. It says, There I will make the horn of David grow. It says, I will prepare a lamb for my anointed. Says um, verse 
18 says his enemies are with clothes with shame but upon himself his crown shall flourish i want you to open your mouth say lord at the end of this ministration today let my crown flourish let the crown you have placed upon my head flourish in the name of jesus that let our crown flourish in jesus name in jesus name we have prayed amen hallelujah okay so we already have pastor esther in the house glory to god hallelujah amen, amen. Thank you, ma, for joining thank you ma for joining god bless you ma it's a privilege to serve god's people today amen. hallelujah amen can you hear me please can you hear me yes we can yes we can um okay, so um pastor esther is an extreme lover of god she's a radical worshiper sing a songwriter a psalmist and a recording artist and a minister of the gospel glory to god um she's a girl child advocate through her just girls talk platform where she reaches out to young girls with the message of self-discovery value proposition chastity and how they can be more hallelujah um, the platform also helps single mothers find their feet in society and their way back to god glory to god um hallelujah. i know that um, there was a program there um that was last month where you went to the schools if i'm correct ma i also saw <laughs> <laughs> Glory <Okay>. to God. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so apart from being a trained microbiologist, Pastor Esther is from the University of Abuja. She has multi expressions of the Holy Spirit. She also serves as a ministry gift to her best friend and husband. Um, they are the lead pastors of my church, MFM Youth Church in the city of Port Harcourt. Glory to God. I, I can pastor's um, um, profile. Is it with us, ma? Yes, pastor is online. Yes, he is. Pastor Sal, we, you're welcome, sir. We honor you, sir. We celebrate you and we love you, sir. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. He's also the voice um, behind the great song, Blessed and Highly Favored. Hallelujah. She has mm. more music in the works. She's married to one and the mother of two. Um, wherever we are, I, I want you to, I just want to see your hands, like wave your hands, please. And jam your hands wherever you are, glorifying God for the life of Pastor Mrs. Esther Dechuku. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Tolu. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Sister Yinka. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much for taking our time to be a blessing unto us. We are having issues with the network with so many people. I pray that the Lord God will assist us today. And um, Christ Valentine, let us prepare our heart to receive from him. This time around, let us prepare. He has helped us in the first, second, third session. This is the fourth session. And, you know, remember what I told you last week, that it's as God is going to be using his verse to minister to us, our heart has to be open to receive what God has provided. So this evening, let our hearts be open, let our ears be attentive, let our spirits be connected as God makes use of his verse to Pastor Hester to bless us this evening. Over to you, Ma. God bless you, Ma. It's such a privilege to be serving um, God's people tonight. And I want to give praise to God. He is the giver of all gifts, of grace, of platforms, of abilities, of um, um, activating graces in the lives of people. So I owe it to the Almighty God for counting me and looking upon this little girl and, you know, 
trusting that she can serve his people. I give praise to God for that. And Sister Yomide, God bless you. You're doing a great work. I pray that the Lord will enlarge the place of your turns and that his oil on you would increase in the name of Jesus. I pray that what you do, you would see the testimony in due season and time. And I pray that your heart is encouraged. Let's pray. Good evening, everyone. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for yet another time out in your presence. Thank you because you're the God of heaven. You're the God who was, who is, and who will forever be our self-existing God, our salvation, our sustainer, our strength. The God who says the thing and it comes to pass. The God in him will live, move, and have our completeness. Thank you for everything that you have done with us, through us, in us, by us, for us. Thank you for what you are doing right now. And we blast and praise in advance of what you are going to do with us. We'll give you praise in the name of Jesus. But I will ask that your mercy prevail in this room. We ask that your mercy prevail in this room, oh God. I decree that it saturates the whole atmosphere wherever everyone is in the name of Jesus. Binding our hearts in one accord as we learn at your feet. As we feast from the godly, lavish feet that is right in front of us. In the name of Jesus. Father, today by your power, by your precepts, by your inspiration, by your ideas, by your instruction, oh God. I said we receive your word today for correction, for direction, so that we as your children can be thoroughly furnished for every good and perfect work ahead. In the name of Jesus, we decree that our minds are fine right now. We come against every wandering spirit. In the name of Jesus, we subject every mind to the obedience of Christ. In the name of Jesus, and I decree that this whole channel where this gospel is spreading, Arakapada Kosha. I decree that the blood of Jesus is hovering over the environment, whether be it in space or wherever we are seated right now listening in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I ask that you show me mercy. You give me utterance. You give me a mouth and a wisdom that the devil cannot resist against. Say, in the name of Jesus, tonight we receive your words, line up lines and precept upon precept. But look at that as your word comfort and enlightens our mind, oh God. In that it enlightens our dark path and lifts up our mind and brings color to our mind in the name of Jesus. Your word that is quick, let it do the quick work in us, oh God. We trust that you will move through the power in your word. Thank you, awesome God. For in Jesus' efficient, we have prayed in faith and tense given it's done. Amen. But I want to be sure that you can hear me. So, one or two persons can. Kindly unmute. So uh, I want to be sure that you can all hear me. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Okay, Ma, can you hear me, Ma? Yes, we can. Oh, okay. glory to God. Thank you. So we just go straight into the subject tonight. Um, and tonight's subject was dealing on restoration. Restoration. And the Holy Spirit helped me to expand that subject. Um, and um, I'm going to be looking at it from the angle of restoration, the revealer of God's glory. Restoration, the revealer of God's glory. Hallelujah. Um, one of the blessings that we are trying to enjoy right now as believers we're trying to press into the possibilities of the restoration that the work of Jesus did, the finished work of Jesus did. We're trying to press into the possibilities because when Adam fell, I mean, we lost our place, but all that Jesus came to do with us is that he came to restore us back to the original plan, back to the authentic plan, back to what God planned for us from the very beginnings of the beginning. Do you understand? So that's what this whole gospel is about. This whole gospel is about restoration and reconciliation. Because every step of the way, I've come to realize that believers need restoration of it could be restoration of health, restoration of your mind, restoration of your soul, restoration of your body, restoration of your time, restoration of your talent, restoration of your treasure. So restoration is encompassing and it's, it's relative. So what it means to Sister Ayo is different from what it means to Sister Esther. What it means to Brother Kaya is different from what it means to Sister Oi Lola. I hope I got that right. What it means to um, Brother Dara Simi is different from what it means to Sister Tolu Lope. And what it means to Pastor Ralu Finedu is different from what it means to Esther. So restoration in the terms of Jesus, it 
is different. But the thing about it is that. But the thing about it is that we all at the point and stage of our lives will need the power of God to work in us for restoration. So I'll take you straight to the scriptures. I'll be taking my um, text from the book of Amos. Amos chapter 9. And I'll be reading from 11 to 15. I'll be going through that scripture. I said earlier we're doing restoration, the revealer of God's glory, of God's original plan, of God's glory. God's original plan is that we have a glorious life. We live in him, we breathe in him, we move in him, we have our completeness. Restoration, the revealer of God's eternal glory. Hallelujah. Are we all there? So if you're there, let me just see one way. Or oh, one or two ways, but that'll be fine. The online platform is such a wonderful platform. So sometimes you're, sometimes you're like, I'm at this end. I just hope they can hear me. So I'll go. Amos chapter 9. I'll read from 11 to 15. Now I'm going to be reading from the message translation. But also on that judgment day, I will restore David's house that has fallen to pieces. So right now, the word of God is powerful. So right where you are, you can put your name on the blessing. Just say, the Lord will restore the family of the Dechikus and everything he has entrusted in our hands. We know God has given you some things to do for him. You've said, plug it into your purpose. You just declare where you are. Say, the Lord will restore the Dechikus. Just put your name on the blessing that has fallen to pieces. Glory to God. So Amos chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 11. But also on that judgment day, and I will restore the Odechikos house that has fallen to pieces. Amen. And I'll repair the holes in the roof. Hey, can you hear that? So restoration is part of, it means to repair, to, re, to seal up, to put a seal. There is a hole. So the Holy Ghost is putting a seal on anyone who's got the hole in their hearts. It could be a relationship. It could be anything. It could be in your business as a whole. There's a loophole. I speak to you right now that the Lord is repairing that hole. Mighty restoration floods your part right now. In the name of Jesus, it says that I repair the holes in the roof. I replace the broken windows. Every broken, anything that has broken in your life or has caused you to break to pieces, I decree that God will replace it in the name of Jesus. So now we can see two definitions of what restoration is about. The restoration can come as repair it can come as re replacement these are definitions of what um restoration is now he said fix it up like new hey, hey this is the wonder of my awesome god when he steps in restoration means that when god steps in it will look like nothing ever happened let me say that you you feel that you've missed 10 years of your time probably you were supposed to get into the university at 17 and then you stay back at home to like 22 23 then you didn't get a job. You didn't. You, you got to the university at 22. Of course, you let's say you're using the Nigerian system, and you're there for four to five years. You graduate at 27. You serve. All things working together for you, God. You serve at 28. I mean, you feel at the time that you've lost some years. No, no, no. At the time you're graduating, God is keeping a job for you. And if you're set to marry, God is arranging your spouse. Everything just falls into place like you never wasted the time. That is what restoration is. Restoration means that. Wherever I am supposed to be at that time, that is where I will be. God is going to bring like 10 years in one. I will just see like three seasons in one. That is what restoration is about. So it will look like, well, you know this common thing that I will say, you will not look like what you've been through. You will not, people will see you and they'll be like, you'll be wondering, are you so, were you the one? You know, I just want to share something. So when I was really, I was, in 2020, I was really overweight. I was like 125 kg. By the time I lost weight after the peak of the pandemic, by the end of the year, I started working out extensively at, um, in March. By six months, by November, December, I was something else. You know, people see me wonder in church, is that Pastor Chinage's wife? Is she sick? You know, because they're like, from there to there, even after, I had to reduce the workout, to, I had to even start eating again. So these I drunk because I'm like, oh God. You know, that's what happens. You know, when God wants to restore you, he would restore you like, that thing never happened. Like, you will not be able to trace it that ah, she was that big. So that's what it's about. He says, I'll repair the holes in the roof, 
replace the broken windows, fix up like new. Mm -hmm. Daily people will be strong again. That's the day people family will be strong again. And they will seize what's left of their air kabayan of their enemy. Plus, everyone else under my sovereign judgment, God's the tree, he will do this. So I'm reading 13 to 15. You know, in the message translation, it moves in clusters of threes and fives. So, yes, indeed. Amos chapter 9, 13 to 15 now. Yes, indeed, it soon be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast. Hey, hey, hey. Is somebody going to say amen? Things are going to happen so fast, your head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other, you will be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once, and everywhere you look, blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings, back to back to back to back, that your mind cannot fathom the mystery of the wonders of the Lord God that you have planted. He says, Blessings, blessings, like wine pouring up the mountains and hills. That's uncontrollable. You cannot control the outpouring of God's blessings on you. Amen. And I'll make Amen. everything Amen. right again Amen. for my people. I will make everything right again. That means restoration means Amen. making right. These are the definitions of what restoration is. It means to repair. It means to uh, replace. It means to make a new, like renew. Then it also means to make right again. For my people israel he said they will rebuild their ruined cities so you know now restoration means to rebuild a kabaya god is rebuilding everything that is ruined in your life you see that relationship you felt that ruined you god is rebuilding your life he's showing yeah. you mercy he's rebuilding your life in the yeah. name of Jesus. so they rebuild yeah. their ruined cities they will plant vineyards and drink good wine as in you deserve something good, my darling sisters and brothers. <laughs> you would plunge into that. They will walk their gardens and eat fresh vegetables. Eh? That means you'll be fresh, fresh up. When people see you, you'll be glowing. The glory of the Lord will be everywhere. The fragrance that you carry with such the atmosphere. When you walk into a room, people will be like, who is that? She glows like she's from heaven. <laughs> hey, that's the one that God will do with you with the power of restoration. In the name of Jesus. Then he says, I'll plant them. I will plant them, plant them on their own land. They will never, scripture says, ah, rather by a copa. He says, they will never again be uprooted from the land I've given them. Mm. Anybody ready to say amen? That's my testimony. Then God is rebuilding my walls. Uh, God is replacing everything that has been broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. I love the scriptures so, so much. So I was saying that. There's something I want us to um, look at when it comes to restoration. Now, when it comes to restoration, you have to first recognize that something is broken, that something is missing, that something is not okay, that something is not fitting, that something is abnormal before you can have restoration. Because if you feel that no, 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 it's not that's how it's supposed to be, that means you will not be able to plug into the power of restoration. And that way you'll be wasting time. And another thing I've come to learn about restoration that is easy for you to get everything that you've actually lost. But the biggest thing, the biggest thing that you need to get back that you have lost or that I have lost, it is time. Because time is the currency of destiny. Time is the currency of destiny. So if you say you've lost a relationship, you lost a baby, you were pregnant, you had a miscarriage. God, God can restore all of that. But you see that thing they call time. Hey, once it goes, it has gone. Except the mess of God breathes on you. And then he takes you, he just closes that gap. And nobody knows that at the time, oh, you were lagging at this point. Can you hear me? A call came in and so I was able to. Can yes, you hear can. me? Yes, we can. Oh, sorry. Oh, it all came in and I was just a bit distracted. Okay, so it's like I, I've been def defining restoration. Restoration means to go back to original plan, to go back to original design, to go back to the creation plan that God had for us. It means, it means to be authentic. It means to be original. It means to be real, to be true, to be strong. It also means to be fit, to stand firm, it also means that you enter into glory. That's what restoration is about. That's the reason the Holy Spirit took my mind. It says that restoration is the revealer of God's glory. Because earlier in that scripture, in Amos chapter 9, you read through, we picked it up from 11 to 15. But if you read through from 1 to 10, he's talking about the things that God was going to do with the Israelites. You know now, 
you know there is thick neck people today they can be um obedient next tomorrow you really cannot predict what they can do how they can do it and all of that so god was going to deal with them at that point yes but somehow his message prevailed and he said okay for everything they have lost in the process of their disobedience these are the blessings that we follow so like i said earlier restoration is relative you know scripture says that god will you know it restore your health that means if you have issues with your health it means that you're going to be healthy again if you have issues with your blood systems your body organs whatever it means that god has the power to restore everything that you have lost so right now i just want us to go into the different kinds of restoration that we can have one of the kind of restoration that we can have is recovery recovery is a kind of restoration if you look at the scriptures in first samuel chapter 30 where david uh you know david came back and he found out that ah everything they have has gone to everything nothing their wives their 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 cattle, their children every their servants everything they had had gone and so david was uh david wept david and his men they wept bitterly because they they dealt with all of them they wept so bitterly they were not happy and you know when david wept you know what happened he straight after that he strengthened himself in the lord so no matter where you are what season you are in your life no matter what you think you are doing you have to come to the point where you have to strengthen yourself in the lord not strengthen your weaknesses not strengthen the things that people say you go to scriptures and you strengthen yourself in the lord because when he's strengthening himself in the lord he not told um, priest abiata please don't get me the um, effort though because he wants to now inquire because when you strengthen yourself in the lord it means that you've gotten some level of strength then you cannot approach the throne of grace for the next step of action to do and so David immediately inquired from the Lord. He asked the Lord, at the end, God, look at what has happened and befallen my friend. God said, oh, you can, should I go? He was like, yes, Father, should I go? That's what happened in the place of strength. You'll be able to ask God, what's the next step? What's the next phase? You understand? And God, the people that God loves to walk with, are people that can easily adapt, people that can easily pivot, people that can easily know that they have to sit in season. They don't have to sink in that pain that they are in. Do you understand? And so immediately he asked to God said, yes, go, you would recover, you would recover all. You would recover all. Go ahead. This is in first summer chapter 30. I don't want us to go through, read through, so it doesn't really take our time. <laughs> and so God told him to go and he went. And on his way on that journey, if you read down through that scripture, something happened. You know, they met an Egyptian. And when they saw that Egyptian, the man, the guy was almost dead. <laughs> he's he's, he's, um, he's um, Lord, his king. Um, his master has left him. He was half dead. When they saw him, you know the thing they did? They gave him food to eat. So this is something, while I was studying the scripture, the Holy Spirit said to me, in your pain, you must choose to be kind. You must posture to be kind. In your lap, you must posture to give. No matter what you go through, you must never, ever, no, never allow it to overshadow, overwhelm your thoughts. Everywhere you are, you must posture your heart to be kind because you really don't know where you receive your angelic assistance. And now because they showed kindness to that Egyptian, you know what happened? By the time he had strength, they asked him questions. Ah, please, do you know where these people that came to invade our land, where they are? Do you know? The guy was like, ah, please, you should not take me to my king, go. Please, I beg, go. But I'm going to show you people the way, but please, please, please don't. You feel like, ah, that's not a problem. You should lead us there. That's not a problem. And I'll listen to this part of the story. And you know, as they went, as the guy, the, the young lad took them there, where by the time David um, and his men were peeping from afar, were looking at them from afar, they were having a feast. They were feasting on the spoil they got. And you know this God, when he wants to restore you, when he wants you to recover all, even the one that the, all that the enemy has, he will give it to you. And that's what happened in that scripture. By the time they went there, they destroyed all the places, killed all the men, even the one they had for themselves, they took it along and added to themselves. That is the power of recovery. That is the kind of restoration. A kind of restoration is recovery. Where you go and take back what the devil stole. You look the devil in the face and say, no, you devil, get your hands off my help. 
Get your mind, get your, your, your hands off my mind. Get your hands off my body. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Get your hands off my children. These children are mighty feet upon the earth. They will live to proclaim the, the work of God. Their hearts are not going to be corrupted. Get your hands off my finances. Hey, and every money you thought you lost at the point, did you just see that? You even have more than what you think. That is the power of re recovery in restoration. So all the things that the men took from them, they got it back and they got theirs. Someone shout recovery. I recover all. Every good thing the enemy has stolen from me, by the spirit of God, I recover all in the name of Jesus. So let's just move on. The next kind of um, restoration I want to talk about is um, rebuilding. Rebuilding how um the Nehemiah was able to rebuild the world. If you look at the accounts in Nehemiah chapter one, verse seven, um, chapter one from verse seven, talks about how he was able to um rebuild the worlds of Jerusalem. So that's a kind of restoration, rebuilding worlds, things and walls. Yes, literally in the sense worlds, but then rebuilding walls could mean in to bring it home something that we can. Is it easily pressing to and relate to means that everywhere there has been an opening, everywhere there has been a lack of covering, that there's there's now beginning to be a kind of defense. God is giving you the strength to build a kind of defense. It could be that God is strengthening your life for those who were struggling with a kind of sin. God is beginning to strengthen you, you know, infuse his strength, his spirit in you. And it begins to strengthen in building a wall against that weakness. Do you understand? So, in the sense, it will literally mean walls like rebuilding, you know, as a real building, putting blocks and all that. But then, in bigger terms, in deeper terms, it could also mean that you are building a kind of defense against the vows of the enemy or against the kind of weakness that you have suffered from. Let me say, someone who, who easily cannot, does not have self control over their tongue. Maybe if you start giving yourself into the place of prayer, you know, asking God to give you the grace to be slow to speak, you no know, pray scriptures over yourself, slow to speak, and you know, um, quick to listen. You know, God should give you the grace that your words will be seen. You know when to speak and how to answer to every man. You know, every conversation you'll be dropping your because in this life, God did not really call us to win arguments. He called us to bring men unto Him. Do you understand? So that way, when you now plug that that ability of maybe excessive talking. In the place of prayer, God will just give you the ability to maybe speak more in tongues. When you're alone or in a place or rather percussive, you just burst forth in tongues. So your spirit is just connected. You're just trying to sing a song. Yes, so God is giving you defense against. So that's kind of rebuilding a kind of wall, you know, to so wage a defense against the weakness and the vows of the enemy. So the next kind of um of restoration, I want to look at repair. And that the, the very um practical case that we can look at is the case of Elijah. You know how Elijah, you know how the people of back came, they were saying they said they were calling on their God, called their God morning, night, called their God, cough, cough themselves, called their God. I said, Your God is dead, no, they yeah, it's not going to hear you. Come on, Elijah was just looking at them like when you're done with messing up this altar, I'm gonna repair and fix it for my king because. This whole thing is a mess. It's so dirty. My my God cannot cannot inhabit this dirtiness. You understand? So Elijah, when they finished their demonstration of shame and disgrace, you know what Prophet Elijah? Did? You know what our Father and the Lord did? He repaired the altar. He repaired the altar. And you know what repair does in the place of restoration? He allows the fire of God to come upon you afresh. Mm -hmm. He allows the Father of God to envelop, to overshadow, to envelop what you are doing. Because after he repaired the altar, if you look at that account closing in, uh, in First King chapter 18 from verse 30, yes, and that's after the, the fake dramatic display of the of the bound gods and his people. Um, you notice that he after he repaired it and he now all set on his own, poured water to tell them that see. I don't need to put all those things that you're putting, but my God will show up in style. We had that confidence. You know why he had the confidence? Because he had repaired the altar. He knows that once he repaired the altar, there will be a restoration of the power. But so a kind of restoration is repair. When you sit down and you repair, you know that ah, these people are not living, are not doing the right thing. They are not, they are perversing the standards of God. They are blaspheming gospel. When you go to that kind of place, you would allow people 
seeks with scriptures. Because one thing I learned in the book of Acts is that every time they display power, you know, there was a set of people who go back, every time they display power, miracles, and they taught them scriptures, there were a set of people who go back to see in it if everything that the disciples had told them were correct. So that they'll be sure that they are not listening to blasphemy. Because in that way, when you know what God is saying, that's another thing. If you don't know what God's standards are, what his precepts are, what his standards are, what his, uh, his ways are, what his words and wisdom are, you will not be able to know when something is being blasphemed. And then you cannot repair. Elijah knew that this was blasphemy. Yeah. This was just, this is idolatry at its peak. And so he knew that before he could access the throne of power for anything or any kind of restoration, he needed to repair the altar. And when he did that, we know what happened. God showed up. And that's what that's the reason we say, Oh God of Elijah, baptize me. Because you know, the God of Elijah is the God of fire. Fire, yeah, yeah. The God of Elijah is the, because he repaired the world. So when you go to a place where so you know that some people here are abroad are not. And sometimes we here in this part of the world. So I'm here in Nigeria, in the city of Pothakot, River State, um, south, south side. Um, so uh, most of them will see stuff on social media, what's happening. We see the level of perversion. We see the level of, the level of inordinate affection. We know on the line in tone that if the fulfillment of the end time prophecies, where men will be lovers of themselves, iniquity will greatly increase. We know the part of scripture that says um, um, knowledge will greatly increase and um, um, children will be... Um, children will be disobedient to their parents you know these are all the fulfillment of the end times we know but like there's something i always say and i'm going to keep saying it that and this scripture is going to take me there because i'm going to go to george chapter 2 from 18 to 25. after that talking about how the locusts came and did all of that there is a part of a mighty restoration that god is going to do in 26 27 28 where he says that he's pointing out a spirit upon all flesh not a color not a tribe not a race not a sex not a gender he's pointing out a spirit upon all flesh do you understand and that my son your son my daughter your daughter and now the, our children will prophesy they will plug into prophecy so in as much as all of those things are happening, the perversion is happening so much in the Western world. You know what we see? We're like, oh. But I know that once you know the standards of God, when you go to a place, you know that this is not the standard of God. I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to repair that altar. When they are done, I'm going to repair that altar. Do you understand? So even this morning, we're at a prayer meeting. We had an all-night prayer meeting. So while I was sitting, the Holy Spirit just ministered to me. That see, he made them male and female. And he told them, dominate, multiply, replenish the earth. And the only way you can do that, you can multiply, you can replenish and dominate the earth, is if you plunk into your authentic self. You go back to your, your original self. Because if you transgender, if you change your gender, no, you have to be who God called you, your real identity. That's the only way you can have that um, declaration, multiply, replenish, and dominate anything that you're doing. And then someone will say that, ah, these uh, gay people, all these perverse people, they are beginning to be pop they are not popular they are popular than the gospel of jesus no way hey the gates of hell can never prevail against the standards of god so repair is a kind of restoration but first you must have known soak yourself into the wisdom the ways the words and the wonder of god that way you cannot plug into some level of repair then another kind of um, um of restoration i love this one is restoration hey remember when jesus showed up at the um tomb i told them i don't know that i'm crying crying up and down do you know who is standing before you hey, hey me resurrection and the last hey kabbalanosa roll away the stone and all he needed to was just to call lazarus you know there's something my father and the lord said one time and i was like oh that's really he said that if jesus had said for the, all the dead people in the grave would have you know come but he just had to be specific lazarus come forth so that's another kind of restoration restoration back to life i want to speak to someone here today every dead good thing i decree and declare and prophesy by the power that's in the name of jesus i decree it comes alive in the name of jesus Amen. and you call the account in ezekiel, um, ezekiel chapter 37 well he had to speak to the dry bones dead dry bones broken to pieces and it came together and the power of resurrection it's a kind of restoration. You know, you remember the widow of Zarephath, her son. When, when uh, the widow of Zarephath, the woman who fed Elijah, when 
in the in the season of drought and lack and want and all of that how the, she lost her son and you know that the truth about this is that miracles are quite powerful because you know when she when her son came back to life that's what she said to like oh, oh i really believe it she has been god has been sending her daily supply you daily supply every day she goes back to that her van she has oh she has flour but she's really like saying are you sure are we really sure are we sure are we not sure you know and god didn't want to confuse the community he didn't want the band to be over because if the band was overflowing she would have had excess and people would be like people would be coming far and near you know when it's funny people go far and near to for people go to far lands to look for food if you recall the time of joseph when his brothers had to go very far so god didn't want to bring that confusion because if he brings that confusion if, if that thing happened if a band was very food the ones the immediately elijah came and said ah, make cake for me or let me eat she said i'm just gonna be smaller i want to make for me my sister just make it for me first just obey the blessing of god is in complete obedience obeying promptly you know so she didn't believe what the daily miracles were seen she didn't believe but when she experienced resurrection she knew she was with a prophet she knew that this is not normal this is just extra extraordinary this is supernatural this is just not just the normal thing that you you could think or you can confirm and that's what happened you know when she experienced that resurrection and power right in the very room i mean that also strengthened our heart and belief in god so resurrection is also a kind of restoration i would also i also want to talk about a renewal reclaiming being able to reclaim your rights that's what jesus did for us so i mean jesus came to allow us access and reclaim our our, our our authenticity it came to allow us to reclaim our power our dominion over the devil you know so reclaim it it's a kind of restoration i just want to rush up now i think i'm running out of time already um rejuvenation it's a kind of um um restoration where your body is revitalized you know you're you're coming out of every sickness your god is restoring your health according to scriptures in Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7 he said for your shame i'll have you will have double for your confusion or rejoicing that portion and all that and god's gonna give you everlasting joy you know but once you have joy you have strength so your body's been revitalized and if you go to the book of jeremiah chapter 3 verse 17 he says i will restore health to you and um if you go to jeremiah chapter 17 verse 14 it talks about how god can heal you and you know and you'll be able to sing for this praise so rejuvenation it's a kind of restoration now i want to talk about things that can you know plunge one into loss that will make you want to start seeking for restoration things that can cause one to lose things and one of the things that come to realize is disobedience you know disobedience is um it can make you lose your place in god in the case of Saul, because it was a simple assignment when you get there kill everything every living thing no animal or i am human so kill everything but when they say oh, no, this one we can sacrifice to god oh this looks pretty this looks fresh we're going to sacrifice some of them to god and when fred samuel came he said all oh, these things that are doing woo, 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 at the back end what's that he said they are the finest of the things that we went to the, you know the places that the spoil we got he said ah, ah you got spoiled what did god say go and smite everything go and destroy everything leave it anything that, that has breath take it down but he did not and you know that singular disobedience you know apart from you know from the beginning the 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 the, the setters are supposed to leave the um the tribe of judah but because the people of israel like they were pressing too much so god does give them so from the tribe of benjamin and something happened in that scripture when that all came on Saul, scripture says that his heart was turned meaning that his disobedience or rebellious if his heart was not pleasing to god and that time, scripture said that his heart was turned to God, meaning that God has even accepted him into the beloved, you know, into you know, running the throne and all that. But disobedience, ah, no, nah, disobedience displaced him. It was just disobedience. So disobedience can make you lose a thing, can take you back, you know, can make you be stagnant. So the things that can make you lose, one of them is disobedience. And we can see Gehazi. Everybody expected that the way Gehazi was serving Elisha, since uh, that the Elisha got two portions of our grandpa Elijah, you think that Gehazi will get four portions? No, disobedience. We don't want to take this thing. We went back and lied. I know disobedience. Not walking in obedience, your authority, rebellion. No, it can make you lose the blessings and your position and what you're supposed to have. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is um um 
lack of knowledge. You know, knowledge is powerful. Knowledge is light. Knowledge expands your mind. It allows you to know what to do, how to do it. You know, like the sons of Issachar, I love that tribe so much because they had knowledge of times and seasons. So if you don't have, if you have, if you lack that, if you lack knowledge, you be, you will lose time. You will lose, you will lose, you will not be able to cover so much ground if you lack knowledge. Because what knowledge does for you is that it gives you a cutting edge. Yes, knowledge gives you a cutting edge of how to be strategic, of how to have a good system that will serve you in that whole um, thing that you're doing, whether physically, spiritually, in your family. Yes, knowledge is so powerful. And one of the ways that someone can have losses when you when you are ignorant of where you are, where you're coming from, and where you're going to. Ah, it's a it's a retarding um, um, effect. On, it has a retarding effect rather on someone. So lack of knowledge can retard someone, can put someone in a spot, can make someone lose time, lose their talent, and lose their treasure. Because that's what the devil does. He's just here to, trying to kill, to steal, to destroy. But what God has come to do for us, has come to allow us to press into the knowledge of light so that we can have light and have it more abundantly. Praise the Lord. So I've mentioned two things, that disobedience can make someone lose a lot of things that would make you want to desire restoration, then lack of knowledge. There's another one I want to talk about, testing and trials, like the case of Job. Job is just a classic um, example. At, at the time when um, Pastor Mrs. Sayomide sent me this, um, that I'm going to speak on, I, I think I was in the book of Job at that time, and I was looking at the story. You know, God had so much was boasting about Job. I was telling them, the devil, have you seen my servant? Have you seen my son? Have you seen my son in whom I am well pleased? Oh God, nothing, nothing evil can be, nothing wrong can be found in him. So all the thing that Job went through was testing and trials. I know he kind of set him back a bit, a bit, yeah, because he lost his wealth, he lost his children, lost everything that he was sick, then he lost friends. You know, that this thing that they come when he comes with friends to so the day when the money goes, people are gonna go. You understand? So, yes, yeah, so testing and trials could cost it, but. If you or if you if you plug your heart or posture your heart to the point that you know that there is nothing that God is bringing your way that's going to overwhelm you, but He's aware, the curse is going to give you victory at the end of the day. You understand? Second Corinthians chapter um, thirteen verse ten talks about that there is no temptation that is coming your way. No, it has happened before. It's not going to overwhelm you. No, God is aware. He's just trying to you know strengthen your character and prove that you can reveal His glory at the end of the day so testing and trial to can to bring a bit of setback to one and another thing i want to talk about is procrastination when god says do something do it do it the blessing of god is when he says do it obedience accuracy precision do it immediately with do it if he's saying do it now do it now if he's saying don't do it now but just fear because when david was anointed he wasn't appointed he was anointed at the time at 17 but he wasn't appointed he was appointed at 30. So do you understand? But he understood his times and season. He knew that he was still ha he has still had to be at the bagger. So you need to understand what you're supposed to do. So if God says, do it now, do it. If he says, don't do it now, don't do it. But procrastination has the power to retard someone. And another thing I want to talk about is carelessness. Careless thought. Careless thought. You'll be giving promises that you cannot keep. You'll be giving promises that you cannot, those things, or giving hard promises that, it, that takes a lot for, for you to, you know, to to um to fulfill something that you, that you know is not within your power you just something that you know that if you do it it's going to cost you to lose a big thing you know it's not really i, I wouldn't say that it's stepping because someone might say that uh, how, how does stepping out in faith comes to play no there's a difference between stepping out in faith and different between when your emotions are overriding your decisions so when you are over emotional don't think like that you need to heighten your discernment for every decision that you want to make and in this end time, I mean, as the spirit of God is moving, and one of the gifts of the spirit is the spirit of discernment. You need to plug into the spirit of discernment. If not, you just be making careless decisions, careless promises, careless talk, careless careless everything, and careless vows. And you're not able to, at the end of the day, you just end up losing things and losing time. Do you understand? So another thing I want to talk about is wrong association. If you move with the wrong people, ah. Apart from, I know that scripture says that when you move with the um, people who are not wise, it tends to word destruction, but it's going to kill time. It's going to kill time. Just imagine you move with that boss people. All they do is to trash people. Tell. That word, that is how she is. You are just taking yourself back. Just imagine you moving with that uh, masturbating. You go for prayers, like Pastor was saying last night. 
you go for prayer, then get on start masturbating, masturbating. All the presence of God that you, you, you that has brought up on you, you just you just deflate it. So if you move to people that are fire igniters, not fire extinguishers, they will ignite your fire. But wrong association is terrible. It stinks. It just just the person backward. If you move with the wise, even if you don't have sense and you start moving with the wise, it will rub off on you because scripture says that, and as we behold that in the mirror, anything that you behold daily, Raya Papa, on a daily basis, you are significantly transformed to the exact same image as that thing. So once you're with the wrong set of people, they rub off on you. Wrong association puts you from can retard someone. But if you're with the right people, the disciples of oh, Peter, well, he was just a Peter man. He was not really, really like a special person like that. But so much of God's presence of Jesus rocked up on him because they beheld him for a time and they were, people could not even differentiate. Is this Jesus? Is this Peter? Is this Judas? That was why Judas had to betray Jesus in the kids because they could not differentiate them. They have walked with them. The, the, the disciples walked with a wise man. They walked with Jesus and his wisdom, his ways rocked up on them. And you can see that his spirit so rubbed off on Peter when he was asking everybody, who, who the men say I am again? What are they saying that happened? What's the gist in town? And Peter said, you are thus. He, he, he gave a deep revelation because Jesus has rubbed off on him and, and he knows who he is. That's what happens when you walk with the wise, with wise set of people. But when you walk with a wrong association or, or even the small sense that you have, it will just deflate. I'm telling you, even the small scriptures that you are putting in your head, you will know you just know that you cannot even recite John 3 16 again. I'm telling you, we work with the wrong set of people. All of this party today, party. I'm not saying don't have, have fun. There are times that you just have fun, you know, play and all that, relax and all that. But then you will know when this thing is not healthy. So rock association has the power to um retard someone. So I want to just um, quickly move on ways that we can get back to what God has uh, given to us. And one of the ways is to, one of the ways to, you know, plunk into restoration where you know that, ah, I've messed up, gone, or I need help, is to return to God. Scripture says that if my people who are called by my name, that's a people like in Nigeria, if we can humble ourselves. And, you know, while I was meditating on that scriptures this evening, a lot of things came to my mind. He said, to humble means to repair. When they humble themselves and they seek my face, that means they want to rebuild their worlds. You know, when I, I talked about the kinds of restoration, he said, and turn away, that's the, they will not reclaim their original rights. Okay. He said he will heal, meaning that he would, you know, rejuvenate them and he will restore them and he will renew them and everything that they have, they have lost is going to restore. So that whole kind of restoration happened in that scripture, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. So the way that you can go back to your original plan, your authentic self, is to go back to God. One of the ways that David was able to plunk into the mercies of God was the fact that he had a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And scripture says that he will never despise a broken spirit and a contrite heart, God will not despise. I know that people that are like, ah, this one why I don't come, it's make I just leave, make I just leave God because you know, go forgive me. No, this gospel is the gospel of reconciliation. Just come. When you, when you just notice that, you know, the prayer gospel, immediately he just came to himself and just told himself that, ah, all these things, even my father's servants are not. I will go back. He went to beg. He, you know, the father's, the eyes of God are wide open. Even the father sighted him from afar. He was happy. Make me the best of wrong. Kill me the biggest of cows. Let's feast. This is what happens when you come back to God. God is like, mm, come back to me, my son. My arms are wide open to receive you. So no matter the phase and the season and the phase that you're going through, come back to God. Another thing I learned in scriptures, um, while I was, um, the Holy Spirit was breathing in my spirit, is that when God is trying to, um, trying to prune you in the process, He's not trying to revenge the sins that you have done. He's not trying to be soft on you. He's just trying to work on you so that you can be better. So anything you notice that you have done something, your physical, person, not so that God is is wicked. He's just trying to know. He just wants you to be better. If you if you do a thing, if you correct a child, you want the child to at least go through a process that will make him know that ah, this thing is wrong, so that he will not do it again, and so that he will learn and be able to share and say. 
don't do this this way don't do that that way do you understand so when god is trying to work on you don't think that he's um revenge you know he's he's just no 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 he's just trying to make you better and so once you can come back to him his arms are wide open and he'll receive you he'll receive you and the next thing that happens when it comes to um how you can get back to your original plan is to come on the seeking knowledge is to be able to elevate your knowledge and your appetites for knowledge as a knowledge of knowing God or fellowshipping with God. That way you can be restored. Yes. When you start fellowshipping with God, he will strengthen you. He will tell you what to do, how to, you know, that happened in the case of David and his people, you know. And another way is to, if you can plug into prophetic word, the top thing is to plug into a prophetic atmosphere or prophet. Because if you believe the word of God, you'll be established. But if you believe the prophet, you will prosper, meaning that you'll be restored. Your, your territory will be enlarged. You'll not be the same old person. You'll not be lagging and all of that. So one of the ways that you can actually assess your full restoration from the throne of grace and from the throne of power is to believe the prophet of God. It's to plug into God's prophetic words and, I mean, the prophets of God that can release their blessings and their seal on you. Do you understand? And another way that you can, you know, be able to hasten your way to restoration is to be able to discern times and seasons. It gives you an edge. Discern times and seasons. It gives you an edge. Ability to, your discernment should be as sharp, sharp as, a, as a tact. It's a kind of meal. The edge is so sharp. When, once you can discern, you will know what to do, how to do it. When, and it gives you an edge and all of that. I pray that this was the word listen to. I pray that you prosper us in the name of Jesus. I pray that we will seek knowledge, we will expand our minds, we will stretch our muscle for knowledge of wanting to know God, seeking God, fellowshipping with Him. That way, our restoration will mind you upon the earth and every mouth will see. And you know, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Once people start seeing that what He's done for you is great, it's the testimony starts going out, it becomes a prophetic. Um, atmosphere and people start plugging into blessings so it's such a great thing to be restored it's such a great and i pray that restoration will reach you in every way it means to you i don't know what it means to you or whichever way it means to you in your health whether in your mind in your soul in your bones in your body in your children in your family in your bloodline you know whatever it means to you in your marital life whatever it means to you in your time in your talent and treasures i decree that restoration will meet you in the name of Jesus, God's abounding mercy will prevail in your life. In the name of Jesus, he would show you mercy. He will show you great mercy. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless us all so much. So, um, back to Pastor Ayumide, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma. God bless you, Ma. Thank you so much. We really appreciate that message. Thank you, Ma. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So, you know, Pastor Mrs. taught us about um, the restoration as the revealer of God's glory. We looked at restoration as in rebuilding or rebuilding. As in, we also looked at restoration as repair, repairing all. Uh, she's made, she said a statement. She said, when Elijah was repairing the, uh, as in the altar, he says he did it with the with the knowledge that the fire of God will come upon that altar afresh, and that when God is ready to you know do His work upon us, repair every everything that the enemies has destroyed. When God decides to show up in style, that's the language she used. He says it allows the fire of God to come upon us afresh. And I believe tonight we have connected to that, that the fire of God will come upon us afresh in the name of Jesus. And mm -hmm. everything that God has destroyed, it will repair the Lord by his mercy. There will be a repair in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, um, Man, thank you so much, Ma. Thank you. God bless you. And we, I, I, I will, I would continue to emphasize that statement that we should seek for wisdom. We should seek for knowledge. We should also seek 
in fact seek for you know you said something about um the group of people you follow your company and i i remember that i learned something recently that the quality of our lives depends on our relationships you know pastor mrs says something she said she said if you walk with fools it will rub on you if you also walk with the wise you will be wise thank you so much ma god bless you hallelujah so thank you everyone for joining us this evening i want you to pray for past i want you to Pray from the depth of your heart that the Lord will enlarge our coast. You remember the profile I read this evening, um, that she's a music minister. She has released uh, an album. I want you to open your mouth. I also want you to, um, okay, so I, I, I'm i going to share the link to the album. I'm going to meet her to share the link to the album on the group page so that we can list. It's, it's going to be a source of blessing to you. Hallelujah. The album is blessed, uh, blessed and highly favored glory to god um father we thank you uh we worship you we thank you for the life of your verse that you have prepared for us we thank you for all that you have taught us through her we ask by your mercy that you have you help us to apply all the principles that she has taught us this evening in the name of jesus that lord god you help us to be aware of the company we keep Will you help us to aspire, O oh Lord, to seek for more knowledge? You help us to walk in obedience. You help us, O oh Lord, to live a life that is obedient towards you, Lord. And you help us, O oh Lord, to discern times and seasons. Lord, as we are going this evening, we ask, O oh Lord, that your hands of protection be upon every one of us in the name of Jesus. Okay. So one more thing, um, before we go, from starting from next month, we are going to start another series, Abide. That is walking, um, dwelling in the secret place, Abide. So we are going to be starting that in August. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining. Um, thank you for your presence. Thank you for staying till now. I know we've passed our time. Um, thank you. God bless you. Do have a lovely evening. Bye. So much, but I'm sorry I passed the time. I sincerely apologize. No, no problem. No, no problem. It's expected. It's still we are still within time. <laughs> God bless you, ma. God bless you, Elijah. Thank you, ma. God, God bless you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you.